I just received a very interesting comment on my video about alternates and alternatives to equal temperament. And basically it was saying, well, I play jazz piano and so um, I think a, a chord with a flat fifth and ninth and seventh or you know whatever, um, it's gonna sound better in equal temperament. And anyway, equal temperament was sort of these jazz pieces were designed for equal temperament. So surely it will sound better in equal temperament. The first thing to say is that I'm a piano tuner and other, many of the people responding in the videos are just, are musicians. And my role as a piano tuner is to say, this is interesting. You know, if you tune the piano certain ways, here are the consequences. And Victorian and Tommy Town will tend to be more interesting and make the music more musical. That's my job as a piano tuner. But the job of musicians is to take my advice, try it, try different things, and um, see what they think that makes the best music. So I'm doing my job, uh, and I'm, uh, and other people need to do theirs. But just by opening the question of what is, what is the best, you know, for each musician, they begin to question what kind of tuning do I like best for this kind of music. Um, that's already a win because right now in the piano world, equal temperament is so, so dominant and most musicians and even many, even most piano tuners aren't asking the right questions um, and aren't aware of this whole world of possibility. And the reason I can feel so confident that uh, almost everybody will find something they prefer over equal temperament is that there are so many options. There are options for a temperament that are far from equal. Uh, and then there are options that are pretty close, but still add a little bit of color, but mostly it's a lot like equal temperament. And that's more the Victorian temperament, which is very close to equal temperament, but keeps a little bit of color so that there's more interest added as the keys change. And that, by the way, is one of the reasons that I can almost assure anybody that a Victorian temperament will be better than equal temperament, even for jazz, because it will add a key color contrast when there's a shift in key while staying pretty close to equal temperament. So it'll be like more musical, more alive, uh, but also the harmonics, the harmonics and harmonies will stay pretty close to equal temperament values. <clears throat> but so that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons it's basically you get an advantage for almost no cost. Um, and so uh, most of the time that works. Still might, some st still might be wondering, how am I so confident that equal temperament can be improved upon? And I think to answer that question, it helps to not have a piano-centric point of view. So to say like, um, like pieces were written for equal temperament assumes that they're writing for the piano, which if you think about it for jazz, um, and if you think about the compromises in tuning that are necessary for the piano, that aren't necessary for the voice, the violin, many brass instruments, um, they don't need to worry about temperament at all. At all, What they need to worry about is what sounds good, and what sounds good is perfect intervals rather than tempered intervals. So the piano is already in a state of compromise. And um, as I mentioned in my other video, uh, the comp there are better compromises available than equal temperament by having some thirds that are more pure and others that are a little bit less, there are advantages to that. So it's not just a bad thing. Whereas in equal temperament, having everything the same but not very well tempered uh, is just kind of, it's boring and it's not very harmonious. So you don't really get any of the advantages and you get all the disadvantages. And it's still, the thirds are still fast enough that you don't, you know, um, it's not very advantageous. So this is why I'm able to say with a lot of confidence that I think most musicians will appreciate their music tuned a different way more than they'll like it in equal temperament. And part of that is just because most other instruments shouldn't be tempering their music at all. Um, and that other instruments benefit from you know, playing with the temperament in a more flexible way than the piano ever can. What I'll do is I'll put some recordings of a just temperament and equal temperament in, just so you can hear the difference between the thirds, because uh, like I said, on the piano, the thirds are quite sharp and the difference is really striking.
And I say that nothing is written for equal temperament because uh, if it's written for equal temperament, if it's something that sound, only sounds good and in equal temperament, well, I can tell you what that is. That's either music where they play a whole bunch of fourths and fifths, that kind of thing, where there's not really, or it's just atonal. In that case, doesn't really matter. It might be written for equal temperament, and it might sound better in equal temperament than another temperament, but that's because they don't use the thirds in a historical way, in an organized way. Whereas jazz music is still based on a like one, four, five, one, you know, chord progressions. You're using thirds, there's still melodies. Um, and in that case, equal temperament isn't as good. Um, whereas, sure, there might be pieces where if you compare it with like a Victorian temperament, maybe it will sound a little better uh, in equal temperament, but that's because there's no thirds and no melody. You know, it's just... But that's it. There's never a moment of... Uh, you know, where you're getting the greater contrast between, um, between the thirds in the different keys. So, so it's uh, the only other exception that I've ever seen in music is where you have vocal music. This is this is why I'm uh, this is why I'm kind of reacting against this notion that that jazz is written for equal temperament. Mm, usually not. The only exception that I've ever seen where a piece didn't sound as good in a well temperament as it did in equal temperament was like a vocal like musical pieces. I'll show you why. Most of those sound better in a well temperament, like I said. Um, but there's just one kind of effect that people go for that didn't sound good. So let's say you're in one key and you're singing. So you're going la 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 Okay? And then you move up. So you go from A major to B flat major. So it goes from like, you know, one key character to another. But it's like B flat is all trumpety, whereas A is kind of like more warm and uh, sort of active. Then they go up to B, which is extremely kind of like energetic key. Um, so in equal temperament, those are all the same. So you can kind of, it's kind of cute to just be like singing a melody in one key and then, oh, you're singing a melody in a second key and then, oh, you moved up to another key. But in well temperament, it's not just the same thing moving up. It really is like, uh, no, those are completely different characters that you're taking on, and it doesn't make sense the same way. That's the only example I've ever seen where a, a piece didn't sound better in a well temperament than in an equal temperament, and it really was written for equal temperament, and it just doesn't work in a well temperament. It just sounds kind of goofy. For the music that most people are playing and how often that comes up, I recommend almost everybody tune their piano in well temperament. Um, the other thing from a historical point of view is to mention that equal temperament, um, even though it's considered to have been invented in the late 19th, early 20th century, you know, um, Victorian and in the Victorian temperament, so like a well temperament that's very close to equal, they thought it was equal. So it took spectrometry and um, yeah, like instruments to prove to people that it actually wasn't equal temperament. Um, and so equal temperament was attempted in the 20th century, um, but the issue is they didn't really succeed. So even though um, there were a lot of jazz musicians in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s, 70s, that were technically working on an instrument that was uh, supposedly equal tempered. The truth of the matter, if you can just listen to a bunch of recordings uh, from the 40s, 50s, I mean, you just listen to the pianos and in some cases, you don't have to be a piano tuner to tell me, ooh, I don't think that's equal temperament. And indeed it's not. If you play on a modern keyboard, um, you know, most of those are getting pretty dang good. And you know, nowadays we have electronic tuners and so forth that are gonna get things pretty close. Um, and then if you listen back to music from the 40s, 50s, you know, for classical concerts, the piano tuner is gonna be excellent. So most of the classical music will be fine, but just listen to a lot of the other pop songs, anything else that involves the piano, 
and it's it's not it's not equal temperament. So even though they were trying to, you shouldn't believe the guide. Um, I would say the the uh, Piano Tuners Guild, at least in the U.S., really got its act together. Let's say in the '80s and '90s, from what I've understood, and started having exams that really forced people to know what they were talking about. Um, and so the quality of piano tuning has gone up, um, let's say since the 80s, you know, and of course it's very uneven. It really depends on the person. Like I was taught to tune equal temperament completely wrong by a piano tuner. Um, and I am, I remember that guy coming in and tuning my piano and me as an, I didn't know anything about piano tuning. I was tuning some notes and being like, why is this one faster than the other one? Why is that one? So, and this is in, you know, the 2000s, late 90s. So, and that guy taught me. So, <laughs> don't think that just because you're playing music in the 20th century, the people are playing on their pianos, that necessarily they're playing on a well, <laughs> an equal temperament that's actually equal. It's def certainly not the case. I, I don't agree, but you know, that's what's so fun about this whole temperament conversation is that I'm really just inviting people to go on their own temperament adventure and just hear music a new way. So, you know, we don't have to agree. And that's I, the goal is to put people on their own journey of exploration and discovery um, and to have frank conversations with musicians. You know, like I said, this is the thing your piano tuners should be telling you. 